we are going to talk about G2G. G2G is the transition from the government through 20 years of the corporate to an imminent entry to the gig world. That's what I'm going to talk about. And talk about it in the context of five key insights that I've picked up along the way. You know, when everyone else was learning A, B, C, D, maybe I was learning U, P, S, C. <laughs> right? That was the dream of a small town Patna boy. If you were a bright kid, you wanted magic initials behind your name. And that's what got me to Delhi. And my first decade was as a civil servant. I was a bureaucrat, which in India we all know is a mighty tough accomplishment. And 10 years later, with an MBA to boot, I had quit the government. And the next 20 years, I built a career in HR and I worked with some of the biggest names as the CHRO of these companies. And come April, I plan to be an individual performer for the first time in my life at the age of 52 and explore the magic, the challenge, the opportunities of a gig world. So at 22, 23, I never worked as an individual contributor, but at 52, I would. So what does it mean? What therefore are the insights of change? So here is the first one. As it says, rough horses, tough riders. I was a young teenager and I learned horse riding in Patna on police horses, mighty big horses. And unlike my brothers, I had a horse which never behaved well. She would bolt when she wanted. She would run away wherever she wanted. And I was very upset. And I told my riding instructor, who was a very senior old instructor, life is unfair. Why can't I also have a tame horse like my brothers? Because to be on a horse which could go wild was a very tough thing. But you know what he said? He said, you know, you are going to be the toughest rider because you're learning to be literally on alert right through. And when I look back at my career and put the entire three decades of my experience back, there was magical insight in what I was told. The lesson I learned was, learn your fundamentals well. You can't just be sitting on the horse and your legs moving left and right. You've got to hold the horse by your knees. I learned the value of resilience. I learned VUCA word very early in life. Because she was literally volatile, uncertain, complex, right? That horse. And I also learned the power of self-belief. The power that I will not be thrown off the horse. And I never actually till date have fallen off a horse. So there are many lessons of change that you learn very early in your life. And I'm very grateful to those brute horses on which I rode at that time. They would go on their two hind legs, but I would say, Pony, relax, you're not going to get me off your back. But in many ways, this is the reality of the world we live in. There is no guarantee. Life is unpredictable. The business context is uncertain. The opportunities are bizarre. And the risk, including to your own careers, are high. You've got to be using the opportunity, not blaming the horse, but leveraging a tough horse to be a better rider. And that is a huge insight when you start looking at your own life, your own career, and your own sense of accomplishment as you build uh, the future that you want to seek for yourself. The next slide that I want to talk about is also very interesting. Now it does of course uh, somewhere represent the world I spent 10 years in, which was the government. This is the north-south block in Delhi. But you know, I have discovered a lot of the bureaucracy out of bureaucracy. It's not to say that every corporate sector is nimble, agile, flexible, willing to be different. And the question therefore I have posed many a time in many stints that I've had in my life has been, are we trying to solve a pediatric problem with a geriatric solution? The problems of change, the problems of today, the problems of tomorrow are really new age problems. Just doing more of what we've always done, even more efficiently than we've ever done, is not the appropriate antidote. 
And I think that's a tremendous insight. New age problems need new age thinking, fresh thinking, fresh insights. And I think it's very important for us to remember that at the end of it all, we are here to solve a problem which is, exists today or a problem which could emerge tomorrow. Let me give you a small example. I mean, I used to work uh, in one of the largest companies in India. And one of the biggest challenges there was about employee engagement, trust. And you know, one of the things that we did was a simple thing. We allowed every employee in that company, irrespective of hierarchy, the junior most employee to self-approve travel to anywhere in India. You don't need your boss's approval. Now, this is something which doesn't happen in most companies. But I looked at data, five years, not one manager in that massive company had said no to a single travel request. So why not trust? Why not empower? Why not just keep the boss posted as an information, but not as a decision? What does it do? It increases trust. It enhances accountability, sense of ownership. So there are small things that you do which is relevant to the new age of employees that we work with. Similarly, customers, clients, each one wants to do things differently. So please remember, don't do things which worked in the past because they may not necessarily be the solution. It's like someone asking me, I need someone with 20 years of experience. And I told that senior colleague of mine, take a paper and pen and write down. And, they, and she said that HR is only giving me people with 15 years of profile. I said, what changes in the 16th year, 17th year, 18th year, 19th year, 20th year? The answer was obvious, nothing. So a lot of it is in our minds. And therefore, please remember, if you're solving a pediatric problem, do not attempt a geriatric solution. The third thing that I want to talk about is really this, the concept of career space and life space. After almost eight, nine years in the civil service with all its feudal trappings, I decided to write an open exam for XLRI, cleared the process. There was no quota for the government. It was not sponsored by the government. And I took two years off. The point to note is, are you adequately reflective when you're changing yourself, when you're changing the world around you? Do you pick up newer skills? Do you take a pause? Do you ask yourself, are you still relevant for the world which is coming? Or are you resting on past oars? I think this is very important. Similarly, life space. What other interests do you have? What passions? What friends? What alternate interests do you have? How do you re-energize yourself? How do you get your energy back? Because today's corporate world drains you. You need to re-energize. And this combination of career space and life space is a lifelong phenomenon. Are you a workaholic? with a huge career space, space and a dot of a life space, or you are a hedonist, or you want only good things in life and you work just because you've got to earn a livelihood, or you're in a combination. But the important thing to note is, we all must recharge ourselves, relearn new skills, learn the art of reflection, stop, pause, reflect, rather than be on the treadmill all the time. And that is what brings successful change change to oneself, one's career, one's organization, one's industry, one's nation. Just running blindly can exhaust you and you may be running in the wrong lane, right? So please remember career space and life space is a very dynamic reality and always stop, pause, look yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing okay? That is really the concept of career space and life space. I now want to talk briefly about dreams. You know, I work with, it's been a dream career. And one of the things I've learned along the way is to dream audacious. You cannot create Manhattans if you think Hamlets. You've got to think big. You've got to challenge yourself. And change, in my experience, some people believe change happens incrementally. I do not come from that school of thought. I believe change must be transformational. Today's world does not give you a second chance always. And therefore, when you're changing orbits, you need to create and generate escape velocity, which actually gets you to shift your orbit. And therefore, are you willing to dream big? Are you willing to fail? 
Are you willing to stand up again? Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to start all over again? Because if you do not believe in these big dreams, there is no way you can inspire and influence anyone else to buy into your dream. And having contributed to the transformation of some Fortune 500 companies, I can tell you for sure, it starts first from your own self-belief. If you want to just preserve the past, you will never be able to create a future. So one of the lines that I have parroted for years now is you must be very proud of your past, but you must never be a prisoner of your legacy. And there's a very thin line which divides the two. And you'll have a number of people who are going to be naysayers, doubters. We've never done it like this before and we've been successful. This is the way we've always done it here. How do you therefore challenge that? How do you therefore change the way you influence? How do you therefore add to that zest of inspiration? How, that you, how do you create your coalition of change which actually helps you move forward? So the question therefore is, dreams is where it all starts. There is no recipe of success, there is no guarantee of success. But one thing is clear, if you start dreaming, you will start challenging yourself, your assumptions, and you will start creating your own future rather than be a passive recipient of someone else's future. And what a waste of life. In today's world, we can actually script our own scripts, but we don't dream wide enough and wild enough. And I would suggest we should do that. And the last that I want to talk about is really the power of connect. We live in a very interconnected world. No person is strong and capable enough of achieving change by oneself. Even if change within yourself, you need someone to acknowledge, compliment, support, handhold, keep you going. And we are talking about driving large scale transformational efforts. We've got to connect hearts and minds. So what does the power of connect mean? A, it means do you get the right set of talent around you? Do they want to work with you? Or do you work with average people? Because talent is a moving definition. What was talent may not be talent in a changed reality. And it's so important to be able to inspire and get that set of bandicoots, so to speak, who believe in your power of that dream and then help you get that done. And they need space. Are you willing to flex your leadership style? Are you willing to change your culture to be able to attract and keep that new generation skill set and talent base? Are your policies and processes enabling free agents to explore time with you? All of this is important. So while that is the one part of hard stuff, all the attendant systems of performance management, rewards, recognition, start flowing from there. You cannot be a different company. You cannot be a different enterprise. You cannot be a different culture if you don't change your operating ecosystem. And how do you, re how do you repudiate all that worked so far and bring in a new change? How do you rewire your organization? But that is why change never stops. You've got to keep changing change. You've got to keep changing change. Connecting also has a very important dimension, connecting hearts. You may get the people in, you may get the technology in, you may rewire processes and systems, but have you connected the hearts? Remember, change is not a solo sport. Change is a team sport within and directionally outside your firm, your clients, your stakeholders, the regulators, everyone has to be influenced to change. And therefore, you've got to connect. And that is where the part of purpose, your own personal charisma, your own personal style, your own leadership approach, this is what defines you. What's your own brand? Do you have a personal brand? I love to ask people about soaps. If you were to be a personal brand, what kind of a soap do you think you would be? So the entire issue is of connecting the interconnected going beyond your industry, going beyond your firm, going beyond your country, getting a set of people, learning from different people, that's the part of connect. Because please remember, in today's world, 
you cannot alone be the panacea of all change problems. You need to build the coalition, emotional, physical, mental, intellectual, to be able to drive this forward. And therefore, the power of connect is actually what differentiates a great change, successful change effort from an average effort. I want to end with this slide. And the slide really talks about lamps. Imagine if we had only done more candles, more to torches, would we have ever invented the bulb? Doing just what we've always done is not always the solution for change. You've got to possibly ask yourself, am I running on the right track, on the relevant track? And changing oneself, changing one's business model, changing one's industry is not always easy. But again, remember, if you want to be a prisoner of a past, you run the risk of losing your future. And as I close my session and my appeal to all of you to dream big, to influence better, to get the right set of people to join you, to connect with you. I remember a letter when emails didn't exist three decades back. My mother wrote me an England letter. It was in my early years as a civil servant and I was going through all my highs and lows of what public service challenges are. And she wrote me a line. She was a professor of English literature. And she wrote me a lovely line. And the metaphor is so powerful. She said, or she wrote in that mail, and I still remember the words, Christ too faced only opposition. And today, half the world is Christian. Now, I don't want to get distracted with the religious fervor of it, but the intent of the metaphor was very clear. If you are in the business of being relevant and impactful today and in the world of tomorrow, learn to question yourself, your beliefs, your practices, learn, get reverse mentored, but learn to recognize there will be resistance and opposition to you and to your ideas. Persevere, because if you believe in yourself, you can and you will, without doubt, change a fair bit of your world. So wish you all the best. God bless.